Well, thanks everybody for joining us here today on our video. We have a special guest today, Dr. Nick Hallen, and uh, he's joining us. Uh, he's been a friend of the practice for a couple of years here, and uh, he's a plastic surgeon um, of Hallen Plastic Surgery. He's in uh, Draper, part of a, a plastic surgery group, and he also does trauma for hand and skin and other things. And uh, so he's here. He's been kind enough to give us a few minutes and, uh, and join us. So, uh, Dr. Hallen, welcome, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so, like Dr. Williams said, uh, my name is Nick Allen. I'm uh, with Halland Plastic Surgery. I'm actually under an umbrella of plastic surgeons called Premier Plastic Surgery. We are the largest private practice group uh, in Utah and also several of the surrounding states. Um, and so we see a lot of uh, cosmetic surgery. Um, I'm one of the only docs in the practice that takes insurance, and so I also uh, do a fair bit of hand trauma, facial trauma, and insurance cases, including breast reductions, wounds, things like that. Um, so it's kind of a nice mixture. I get to do uh, about 70% of what I do is your bread and butter, uh, breast augmentations, mommy makeovers, tummy tucks, and then the rest of the time I get to do some cool hand trauma and uh, some big wounds and facial trauma and a little bit of everything else. Uh, I've been here uh, in Draper with this practice since uh, July of 2017, so going on three years now. Cool, good, yeah, and uh, and uh, you know I've known you for maybe two or three years, you know. Uh, yeah, so act actually, I'm going to tell a story because you okay. are not going to be as generous with this story. So I came uh, to Utah in God, it was probably May of 2017. I was getting ready to to join this group. Um, and after about, so, so for those, for those watching, uh, medical school and then residency for plastic surgery is a total of about 10 years. I legitimately had not seen a dentist in 10 years because when you're a poor med student, you think, well, <laughs> I can't afford this. And when you're, when, you, when you're, when you're working, when you're working 80 hours a week, you know, that's right. When you're working 80 hours a week, you think I can't have time for this even if I can't yeah. afford it. So I came in and I had a horrible, like, bad tooth abscess that Dr. Williams was able to treat and I ended up needing a root canal. We saved the tooth um, and I was just glad I found you. It was a miracle. <laughs> yeah, well good. Well, you're, you're, you've you're been great and you know, uh, Dr. Allen's a real easy going guy so we're glad to have you here and you know, take, <laughs> take some care of his patients too. So, um, but yeah, so tell us, you know, now that we've had a, you know, COVID, some changes, you know, we talked a little bit before, you know, a lot of the sterilization and disinfection protocols all of us have aren't terribly different yet, at least. A lot of that stuff we're doing anyway, but tell us, you know, if someone coming to your office, what kind of differences may they have now, if any, compared to, you know, before March of this year? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing kind of what, at least for the foreseeable future, is going to be the new normal. I mean, as a as a, so we have a clinical side here and we also have an ambulatory surgery center. So we were already doing, you know, as, as we were already as sterile and clean as possible. All the rooms mm -hmm. were already getting turned over, wiped down, sterilized. And so that has just been stepped up a little bit. I, th I think the biggest changes are um, anybody's going to be screened, at least for right now, when they come in. So everybody gets screened for any, uh, they, they do a COVID questionnaire their temperature mm -hmm. gets checked, and then everybody, both patients and uh, physicians and staff are in masks. Those are the biggest differences. Other than that though, we're trying to get back to normal. We're seeing patients, um, we're also offering virtual consultations for those patients that aren't comfortable coming in. Cool. Um, we're, we're trying to stagger the appointments so that we don't have a bunch of people sitting in the waiting room at all. Um, but we're trying to get back to business as usual. We, we started doing some elective cases this week and I had my first Kind of full day back in the operating room yesterday, which felt great. Um, cool. But I think it's important to get get back to to some semblance of normality. Yeah, I, I agree. We were, uh, you know, we were open the whole time, uh, kind of like you're doing. You know, lots of emergency care. You know, broken teeth, root canals, wisdom teeth stuff. But um, mm -hmm. you know, took for granted what we had because now that we're getting back into a regular cycle and seeing patients for checkups and things too it feels good just to you know get get the wheels humming along again <laughs> you know? are you, you going to see some bad teeth like i mean i know it was only six weeks but are you going to yeah. see some 
some bad things. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we have had a number of those already where stuff was like, you know, maybe wasn't quite emergency, but it was pushing that and for whatever reason, or maybe, maybe it was a, someone who was, you know, in a, in a group that's a little more compromised or worried about coming in. So they maybe push things back a little bit. So yeah, we've run into some things that worsen it. I think too, just the stress of the whole situation, everybody must be clenching their teeth or something. Cause you know, for, for, uh, so many patients, poor teeth are just, you know, cracking and breaking. And I laughed cause you know, that's me too, is, you know, we get a little bit under stress and start squeezing our teeth together and, you know, maybe, uh -huh. maybe forget brushing as much as we should. Cause we're distracted by other things, you uh -huh. know, but but that, that's great. You offer virtual consults. I think that'll be really helpful. I, I know we, we started doing that last Thanksgiving actually, because we nice. started seeing a need where, you know, if it's your birthday or your kid's soccer game or, you know, uh, Christmas Eve, that's when, you know, your tooth's going to hurt or you're going to slip and fall and cut your hand open. I mean, it's just always those kind of things, you know, so, so that's cool. Well, um, what, you know, with, with summer coming up, what are maybe some tips for people as they're out, you know, doing different activities, um, you know, sun related, environment related, or maybe accidents you see happen more in the summer? What are some tips you can uh, share with our viewers for what they should watch out for? Yeah, um, a couple of things um, I will say it all actually kind of two, two sides of that spectrum. So with summer coming up, skin care is obviously a huge thing. Um, Clarity Skin is our medical spa here. Um, and they do everything from Botox and fillers to just general, uh, you know, hydrofacials and skincare regimens for, for, for our patients. Um, but a good skincare regimen is hugely important. And I won't go into all the details of it. What I will say is the most important is every single skincare regimen should end with one thing, and that is sunscreen. And what, whatever you put on your face, the last thing before you go outside should be sunscreen. Um, the SPF uh, is not is, is important, but it should be at least a 30. Um, don't put 10 on your face. It's not going to do anything for you. Okay. But as, as you get past an SPF of 30, the efficacy actually starts to drop down. So mm. paying a lot more for an SPF of 50 is not going to really give you the okay. benefit what just a 30 would do. Um, it's more getting it on there regularly and applying exactly. it, reapplying exactly. than it, how strong it is after you hit 30. Exactly. Pay attention to uh, what they say on the bottle about being waterproof and water resistant. Um, the water resistant ones basically mean we're not waterproof. You can jump in the water and it's okay. Um, mm -hmm. The waterproof ones, even though they say waterproof, that I think the regulations is they have to last more than an hour after you're in the water. So even if you're out swimming and playing in the lake um, or boating, it's really, really important to continuously apply that sunscreen. Um, even if you're feeling comfortable because it says waterproof lasts all day, chances are it probably does not. Um, the other side of the spectrum, I'll tell you, one of the things I saw with, with this quarantine and the COVID and everything was um, everybody decided now was the perfect time to pull out that power saw in their garage they haven't used in 10 years. Um, and so hand injuries were through the roof, which wow. was great. It kept me busy. But what I will say is don't take the guard off of your power saw. Um, keep, your, keep your hands safe. Um, but yeah, those two things have been uh, important right now. Cool. Well, that's good. Yeah. I, uh, I, I heard once, you know, maybe you can clarify, but Utah has a high rate of skin cancer maybe compared to some other states because we have lots of outdoors and hiking. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. I, do, um, I do a lot of uh, reconstruction after what's called Mohs surgery. Mm. So uh, Mohs surgery is a special type of surgery that a dermatologist will do um, if you have a, a, a bad form of skin cancer. Um, and so what they do is they are, are, they're trying to save as much skin as possible but confirm that they get all of the cancer out. So they do several different dissections and then the dermatologist looks at the specimen under a microscope um, and they're trained to say, okay, we have a little bit of cancer left on, on this section of my dissection and they'll go back and take that out and then look at it under a microscope and confirm. And it may take three, four, five rounds of having a skin cancer cut out and wow. then 
a dermatologist will have, they're, they're, they're doing the important part. They're taking the cancer out, but they'll be left with, you know, a huge chunk out of your nose or your mm. cheek. And they're not trained to close those types of wounds. So those patients will then be said, okay, cancer's gone. Now go see Dr. Howland uh, and he'll close you up. Um, gotcha. And, you know, oftentimes patients don't realize that. They go into a dermatologist and they think, oh, I've got this little basal cell cancer. It's no big deal. And then all of a sudden half your cheek is gone and you realize, oh boy, skin cancer and sunscreen was pretty important. I should have, I should have paid attention to that. Right. So that Absolutely. is the importance well, of wearing that sunscreen. Cool. Well, that's good. Yeah, I know, uh, you know, we, we're always seeing a lot of fishermen and mm -hmm. it seems like men more because women tend to wear more lip coverings generally, but you know, like that bottom lip, they get that kind of angle of the sun and scorching their lip. I was like, you gotta, you gotta keep something on there. You know, you only get one set of lips, you know, it's so, true. Dr. Another, Allen would love, would love to see you, but he'd probably rather you didn't have to do that. You know, so. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The other thing I see a lot of is those sun, sun, those sun cancers or skin cancers from the sun. Um, those come up more frequently on the left side of the face. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason being is because when we're driving, that's the side that the sun is glaring to yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and so I see them more on the left side, which is kind of interesting. Wow. All right. Even, even with tinted windows, you're still with tinted windows. Yeah. enough hours driving like that all summer long. Yeah, um, not, the, not even illegal tinted windows keep right. out all the UV rays. <laughs> sure, yeah. So how much how much does most clothing do, like SPF factor, you know, like a like a T-shirt, like one T-shirt, is that usually equivalent to like a 30 or something, or does it just really depend on the fabric and everything um, else? I really don't know the answer to that. I think it depends on the fabric. Um, colors definitely help, but you're going to get more UV rays coming through a white or a lighter colored shirt than, than a darker color shirt. Um, but especially if you're going to be out for a long period of time, think hats, think layered light clothing. And, but even more than that, just make sure you've got that sunscreen on. Cool. Cool. That's great. Those are great tips. Well, Dr. Helen, you're a wealth of resources and, uh, Learned some great things, you know. I took some notes here, so thanks for sharing. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, thanks for your kind words and uh, and uh, you know uh, being a great referral source for our patients. So, um, anyone watching this, if they want to come see you for a consultation, or you know maybe they've got some skin things they want to take care of, mommy makeover, those kind of things. How would somebody get in touch with you? Absolutely, it's very easy. Um, you can reach out to me on Instagram at Howland Plastic Surgery is the handle. I handle that account and answer all of the DMs on my own. Um, cool. So anytime you message, you're going to be speaking to me directly. Um, you can call the office, 801-571-2020. Uh, you can go through the website at howlandplasticsurgery.com. Um, all of those are the best and easiest ways to get in touch with us. Awesome, fantastic. Well, thanks for your time today, and we'll talk again soon. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Dr. Williams. Look forward to seeing you again. All right, cool. Thanks.